In the previous video, we looked at the estimator B, and we saw that it has a normal distribution with mean beta and variance sigma squared times x transpose x inverse. So that was for the entire vector B. Now we're just going to look at one component, the jth component of it. So the jth component of it still has a normal distribution, and its mean is beta j, in other words, the jth entry in beta. And then the variance of the jth component of B is sigma squared times, now we need to go into x transpose x inverse and find the j plus oneth entry. So go off, find the j plus oneth entry of x transpose x inverse and multiply that by sigma squared, and that will give you the variance for bj. Okay, so that is the distribution for the jth component of b. We know then that we can write this as bj minus beta j over the standard error of bj is normal with mean zero and variance one. Okay, and if we need to go ahead and sub in mean squared error for sigma squared, because most of the time we will not know what sigma squared is. So we sub in mean squared error here. And then bj minus beta j over the standard error of beta j will have a t distribution with n minus k minus one degrees of freedom, where the length of beta is k plus one. So we have k plus one regression coefficients, or in other words, the length of beta is k plus one. And then we have a sample size of n. So we have n minus k minus one for degrees of freedom. Okay, so using this, then we can go ahead and do things like a hypothesis test for bj, or we can make a confidence interval for beta j. So if we want to do a walled test, then we know that we need to use this as our test statistic. So our null hypothesis, remember, is that beta j is equal to zero, and our alternative hypothesis is beta j is not equal to zero. And then we need to choose our significance level, alpha. And then we can look at our test statistic. And our test statistic is bj minus beta j over the standard error of bj. OK, under the null hypothesis, beta j is zero, so we can go ahead and write just bj divided by the, its standard error. And that will have a t distribution with n minus k minus one degrees of freedom under the null hypothesis. Okay, so you go ahead, you grab the value for bj and you grab its standard error and then just calculate that ratio there and then Compare this to a t distribution with n minus k minus one degrees of freedom. We know that this t distribution is centered at zero. And then we can calculate here's maybe the absolute value of our test statistic. So we have bj divided by its standard error and then absolute valued. And then here we have the negative absolute value of bj divided by its standard error. So then we calculate our p-value by finding the area of those two tails there. So we use the fact that it's a t-distribution with n minus k minus one degrees of freedom to calculate that p-value there. OK, so this is how you would conduct a walled test for component beta j. And what this is saying is, given that we have all of those other 
predictors in the model. So given that we have all of the predictors besides XJ in the model, we're wondering, do we still need to have XJ in the model? Or can we remove XJ? So this would mean that uh, we do not necessarily need to have the Jth predictor. And this is saying that we do still need to have the Jth predictor in there. Okay, so that's our wall test. And then similar to um, confidence intervals and in simple linear regression, we know that a confidence interval would look like our point estimate plus or minus a quantile from a T distribution. So now we have N minus K minus one degrees of freedom. And we have one minus alpha over two in each tail. And then we multiply it by the standard error for beta J. And this would be a one minus alpha confidence interval for beta J. And remember, we get that quantile for the T distribution. So here's our T distribution with N minus K minus one degrees of freedom. We put one minus alpha in the middle. This is centered at zero. And then we're looking for this cutoff here so that we have alpha over two in each tail. So we might get something like positive 2.21 and then negative 2.21. The exact value for the cutoff here will depend on how many degrees of freedom you have, and then also, of course, your level of confidence. Okay, so then once we go ahead and crunch this number, we can say that we are 95% confident that the true value of beta j lies within that interval. Another way of saying this is if we did this whole process over and over and over, then about 95% of 95% confidence intervals would contain the true value for beta j. All right, next video, we'll talk about mean squared error.